Hi everyone, this is Jason Zak from the Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to look at a variety of genres, you could say rock and roll, boogie, woogie, I don't want to get my genre names wrong, so whatever you heard in the intro video, it's that genre, okay? So you could look at a lot of the older 60s, 70s, 80s rock and roll kind of songs. You could also drift into blues, so what this lesson is going to do is... I will give you a bass line which you can morph into a variety of genres, be it blues, maybe a little bit of rock, rock and roll, uh, salsa and boogie woogie and the like. Uh, then we'll do a bass line with some passing bass notes like you heard. Ba -ba 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 -ba. We look at some passing bass. Passing bass notes is a very much requested topic on our channel. So I thought this lesson will help for that. And in the right hand, we are just going to well work on our hand independence and our chord playing as well as inversion playing by just picking a simple triad, a major chord. We'll take major chords for this lesson and, and do a quick shift. We look at a quick chord shift. And we'll figure out what those two chords can be. A lot of the stuff I tell you in this lesson will need you to play along with me. So try to get your keyboards out or pianos out and watch the video. You can pause it at any time. And my handwritten notes, including the staff notation for the entire exercise, is waiting for you on our Patreon channel. So do consider supporting the channel and getting yourselves a copy. Not, the, not only for this video, but every tutorial we have done on our channel has been supplemented on Patreon ever since we got on the platform. So do consider heading over to our Patreon page and looking at the offerings. Also, it'll be nice if you can consider hitting that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications. It's literally right there. Can you please click it right now? That helps the channel grow. Let's get cracking. So I'm going to take the key of G and limit our study to just three roots. The one or the tonic as we call it, the four, the predominant or subdominant as we call it, and the five, the dominant as we call it. So in the key of G, if you consider G major as the scale, G would be the root, C would be the perfect fourth, D would be the perfect fifth. So we'll play major chords now. So G major, C major, and D major. You can play it in any inversion. I would encourage you to practice all the inversions possible. There are three inversions per chord. So G major in root, G major in first, G major in second. So G, B, D, B, D, G, D, G, B. Now C major, C, E, G, E, G, C, G, C, E. Then we do D major, D major, F sharp, A, D, A, D, F sharp. Okay, those are your three chords. You'll need inversions because now in this exercise, we are going to shift very quickly from chord to chord to get this passing chord movement in the right hand. So if I take G major and I want to do, and I want to have a passing chord, a good tendency would be to to bring in the the Elton John passing chord movement as I call it or the plagal cadence where you go up a four okay and then you just play that very fast this thing called the very bluesy It's very helpful to get your one going to the four of that one, you know, very quickly. So G to C, G to C, C to G, C to G, and then C. What about C? C's plagal would be a non-diatonic chord, namely F. So C to F, C, C to F, C F to C. But that sounds very rock-like and very rock and roll, blues, because of that flat seven, you know? And then for D, D's plagal would be the G triad, which we already learned. So yes, I said we should learn three chords in this lesson. I'm now making it four. So you have G, passing chord, 
C to G. Then if you take the C chord, its passing would be, and then you do D, G to the D. Okay, that's your plagal uh, passing flavor. So that's going to happen in the right hand. Remember that. Now I'm going to drift or switch our attention to the left hand. Left hand is just going to do three patterns. The first pattern is I'm just going to call it the slow quaver pulse, which is eighth notes but played slowly. As you can see, my head is showing you the pulse too. song just came out from nowhere dolly parton is 9 to 5 check it out you can find pretty much the same thing but i think she plays it on f sharp anyway when you play this pattern try to use your wrist and use it and keep it very flexible and very elastic we leave you a couple of videos in the description to build your posture, improve your posture, especially to loosen your wrist and use all the resources which your body provides to play the piano. Not just the arm area or the fingers, also your back, your shoulders. So uh, I don't want to repeat myself. So we leave you a couple of posture videos in our description. Check them out. So you don't want to play like you're getting a shock. Yes, play staccato, but keep your wrist relaxed. Bounce it. Gives you a very interesting pulse. Okay, this is the bass pattern. Give it some emphasis. Maybe you want to highlight the one, two, the downbeats. One, two. Or you want to highlight the snare drum hits okay now before i get to the left hand flavoring with passing bass notes let's look at a couple of other patterns if you want to speed this up you can go just play the quavers faster or consider them as semi quavers one e and a two e and or i just like to consider it as fast quavers or anything groovy I think this will work or come back to the pulse and the slower you play the pulse you can imagine the feel of your song so what I mean by time feel would be that would be straight 16s That would be swing. Because you're playing the pulse slowly, you can even do things like triplets. So... <laughs> Back to swing. Straight. So that's the advantage of a slow pulse. But if you go faster, you're kind of committing to the time feel already. So if you want to swing this, you, you can generate the swing from your left hand itself. Now 
if your hand starts hurting and if you want to change genres all you have to do is don't play it together just toggle your pinky and your thumb and you automatically get a disco feel which you can swing like this or straight Okay we've done a separate disco piano tutorial a couple of them actually we leave leave them in the description So this would kind of be disco or something more dancey versus this is more rock versus let's take it to disco I'm just swapping out i'm just interchanging or alternating between pinky and thumb for disco and keeping a very staccato thumb in the process back to my rock groove okay so that's about the essential bass lines of the left hand now let's try and add some flavor with passing bass note so for this lesson i'm going to explain passing bass notes in a very simple way with and hopefully you can use this simplicity to make your own as well so the logic i think is pretty simple you take your g play it for however long you want okay but it's getting a bit boring isn't it it's just the same old g so let's make it a bit interesting in there at the last three sub beats i am playing its relative minor or down a major 6th g's major 6th is e or you can remember it as the relative minor so down to the e and then chromatic up even more up and back to the root so you have to time it well so since it's a three note climb you have to do it at the last three beats of the of the music keep the snare articulation going that's the pattern now let's do the same story for c what c is relative minor a so a a b flat b c that's the chromatic a b flat mm. now now i can either do it with single single notes 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and and 2 and 3 or the whole thing with doubles so i can make it longer better when you're playing it faster versus slow so this is the slow bass climb now doubling now do the same story for d what is d's relative minor b so you drift to b and then chromatically glide up to the root of that chord so this is the single option now let's do the double option faster now let's put it all together with the g the c and the d and there's no rule as to which chord you play it's just that when you are about to go to c uh, then you need to do its passing notes and then you take yourself to c so if i'm on g i'm just holding a g major chord just for context there and to conclude the lesson we are going to look at an exciting rhythm pattern in the right hand so stay tuned i never do a lesson without focusing on hand independence so we will get to that and also a space for you to improvise so stay tuned so you go i'm just holding g major in the right Okay 
now I'm going to C. C. Maybe back to G. Uh, what do we do? The road road to come back to G, I have to do is E, F, F sharp, G. C. E, F, F sharp, G. Now going to D. D, C, C sharp, D. B flat B C back to the tonic you can do this in a blues way you know 12 bar blues So you could do this in a blues context or you can just do it based on the progression of your song. So that's about the left hand. Now let's look at a rhythm pattern which we can do in the right hand. So the rhythm pattern would be a, a dotted crotchet, one and two and a quaver, rest, four and one and two and rest, four and one and rest, four and. And there's even more rest because the next bar you do nothing. So. Well, the nothing is a space for you to improvise later. So, in the right hand, that will be the G chord. Let's do it with the bass. Let's count and play. One and two and three and four and one and two. With the pass, if you can. So let's now bring in some passing flavor in the right hand. We've done passing bass. Let's now do the passing triads, which we learned earlier in the lesson. So we do G, C, G. Let's bring that in with it with this rhythm pattern. So G, G, C, G would be one permutation. Or you go G, C, C, G. Or C, 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 G. Up to you. So I'm going to do G, G, C, G. Plagal. Whichever inversion you need to go on. Two, three, four, one, two. That's also nice. C, 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 G, C. Passing would be F. Okay, and there's that gap is there for you to improvise. It's also to help you practice the passing bass, which I don't want you to forget. Back to the tonic. Up to the dominant. Speeding 
it up there because of blues you know the 12 bar blues it, there's a quick change at the end at the turn around as we call it so in a nutshell that's basically the exercise if you want to practice this further you can do it on other keys maybe take the key of f or take the key of c d e o did i say c sorry c is illegal on this channel my bad so take it on a few other keys and see how it goes and there's also this gap which i've left so in the gap you could feel free to improvise something a nice scale which could be of use would be the major blues scale so g major blues would be that's 1 2 3 flat 3 5 major 6 octave so you can do in that gap let's keep it slow just g is enough so get that rhythm g g and then the the lick Fill it up there. There we go. So if you can, feel free to improvise in that gap. So. A good way to start improvising is actually sing in that gap and try to play back what you just sang. You can even stop everything in the left hand and just try to get that that itself is a good workout. So so on like okay so hope you found the lesson useful i think we've covered a lot of potential genres we've just not got into it in too much of detail but you could use this to play blues rock rock and roll you know ro uh, some disco some funk some glam rock from the 80s you can use it to play a lot of things i i, I hope uh, and if not anything it's a good way to improve your hand independence your chord changing also understanding how passing bass can potentially work this was just the the tip of the iceberg so to speak when it comes to the uh, passing bass do check out some of our other uh, bass lessons especially the passing bass lessons we leave you a couple in the description and uh, stay tuned to our channel for a lot more you can also be an active part of it by letting us know in the comments what you thought about the lesson you can also hit the join button and be a regular supporting member you can also help us on patreon and also get to interact with me on on those uh, members only portals right thanks a ton for watching the video i will catch you in the next one cheers